Well, hello, everybody. Thank you so much for attending our thematic units, um, talking about our Study Sync program. Now, if this is the first time that you are seeing Study Sync, um, I will be happy to just give a quick run over. Study Sync is our 6 through 12 ELA program that is fully correlated to the Common Core State Standards. And the beauty of this is that you have all the abilities to cover the Common Core and still give you the flexibility to have time to teach whatever you want. There's so many aspects to study sync, but today we're going to be talking about thematic units. So let me go ahead and start, and we, I do want you to know we want to answer your questions. Um, we have quite a few people that are attending this webinar, so if you have a question or a comment in the chat button uh, right down here, please type your message. And Jen, who's my, my co-host, will be answering your questions. So we'll always be taking a break for questions and comments. And so, because we want to make sure that we get those answered and um, kind of guide this how you want the webinar to go. So first, let me kind of go over studies thing. When we were first coming, um, coming up with the thematic units, we know that teachers were sometimes worried about getting things that were rigorous. You know, sometimes rigor just means harder. Well, when you're talking about ELA and literature and reading and writing, rigor is having kids understand what they're reading and writing and really making sure they have those skills for the common core. The next piece is relevance. How is this even relating to teenagers? How do we get a 16-year-old student excited about what they're reading and truly understanding it? Results. So we're all taking those wonderful Common Core tests. We got to make sure that our kids are ready with results. And the last piece is real ease of use. We want to make sure that you as a teacher can feel confident about using this program, using all the technology, the digitally enhanced pieces to get those students excited and engaged. But we need to make it a lot easier for you. So that is what we really try to do with these them thematic units. So how are you going to cover the common core standards and still teach rich literature? What I'd like you to do right now is either think or write in some comments of, of how you think that you're either going to be able to cover all the common core and teach literature or some of the pieces that you are struggling with. You know, how is it that you're going to do it all? We'd like to hear some of the comments from you as teachers of how you're going to make this year happen with getting all of those standards reached. So if you'd like to comment or uh, put some questions out, this is the time where I'd like you to really think about how you're going to get that done. So Jen just answered, asked the question, how are you going to cover the Common Core and still teach rich, rich literature? Oh, Jen looks like there's a comment there. What do we have right here? Incorporating the nonfiction element of Common Core into my fiction novels. For instance, articles in the school shootings while reading 19 minutes. And that is from Nicole. Nicole, that is so true. How can we use outside things that are not just a, a, a novel base, but outside current events? And we're going to talk about blasts. Those can be our current events and still using that rich writing. Let's see, testing, yes. We have great testing, and we even have some of the testing that looks like the park, the two-part questions, which is so important. I see incorporate standards with our weekly reading passages and use outside resources like Time for Kids. Right. Once again, using what's going on in the world. Again, making literature and reading and writing relevant to students. Well, I'm going to keep moving on here so we have time, but feel free to answer your questions. Um, ask questions. Jen will be able to help you. So how are you going to teach, how are you going to cover the Common Core and still teach rich literature? Well, we came up with the thematic units. 
a thematic unit. There is four at each grade level. So from grades 6 through 12, there are four units at every level. Within those four units, each unit will have 10 to 12 texts of all different genres, 15 to 20 skill lessons. These are those key reading skills and key writing skills that are embedded within the Common Core Standards. And this is all ELA, all, the, all of these standards that are expected for you to cover for each individual year will be covered if you use the thematic units. So if you follow along with all four thematic units, you will cover the full Common Core skill base and give you about two months to teach whatever you want. Because we know that's very important for literature teachers to be able to teach that favorite novel or teach that piece of, of a play that they always want that really enriches the students. We want to be able to have that freedom and flexibility to teach whatever you want. These are 30 to 35 days long each unit and with an optional research project. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and jump right into a thematic unit. So if you've played around with SteadySync before, you know what this is. This is your home page. This is your library. So as a teacher or a student, you can search by genre for a story. You can search by subject, lexile, so giving the teacher great flexibility with finding stories. You could search by Common Core Appendix B, publication, theme, uh, even the Newbery Awards. So if you played around with this, you know what this is all about. So then let's go over to our unit section. Now, if you've heard about Study Sync before, you know we've already always had our literature-based units. A literature-based unit is based on a novel that you're already reading in class. But what we do is we give you extra materials to teach that. And you can come back and look through this when you get a, um, a code from your sales rep. And you can see how wonderful our literature-based units are. So this is going to be an example of our thematic units. So once again, there's four per year, 10 to 12 um, readings in that year. So let's go ahead and we're going to take a look at empathy. This is ninth grade. These are suggested for ninth grade. So let's, I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And we'll go straight to the study sync page. First of all, you're going to start off with an overview. So the overview is going to be empathy. It's going to be talking about empathy. So let's go ahead and take a listen. An Oklahoma family driven from home by dust and drought. An angry girl tramples a flower bed in a country town. An immigrant worker labors to survive amid corruption in Chicago. How does it feel to struggle against the odds? To be those that have no choice but to struggle. A person denied water at a public fountain because of skin color. Another, deformed by nature, forced on display at a freak show. Are we moved to pity? Do we feel empathy? Or are we comfortable at a distance? Stony is the road they try. Why should we care? How does compassion inform our understanding of the world? So this is our overview. This is going to start the thematic unit. This is a perfect opportunity for kids to talk about empathy, trying to understand what empathy is and how it's important to a ninth grader's life. So if we move down to the instructional path, and I apologize, I'm going to move this just a little bit here. So this is our instructional path. This is where you can see everything that goes along with the empathy unit. Right here, this will be all of the excerpts that you're going to be reading from. To Kill a Mockingbird, The Jungle, Lift Every Voice and Sing. So here's going to be your 10 to 12 texts. Oh, excuse me. I apologize for that. So let's go ahead and we're going to start off with a big idea. So we know that empathy is going to be our unit 
or our, uh, our thematic unit. So let's go ahead and take a look at the big idea. So we can go ahead and preview to see what that's all about. Here's where blasts come into play. Now we have different kinds of blasts. We have current events blasts, and when I think Nicole was saying earlier, talking about Ferguson, Missouri, this is where you're going to find things like that. And when the, they're on the front page in your library, you can actually look up all the blasts that we have. With the thematic units, we have blasts embedded within the program. So you don't have to look for things to assign. So what a blast is, is it starts off with a question. How do we develop empathy for others? The students can read information about that, and then there's even some research links. So the students can read the information that you're giving them. They can even go farther into research, taking them out into the internet. And then they have a question to ask, to answer. How do we develop empathy for others? Now, if you notice here, it's 140 characters. Does this seem sim uh, similar for some other people? This is just like tweeting. Kids are used to answering this way. But here's where the rigor comes in, 140 characters. The students have to actually answer with a full sentence and full thought in just 140 characters. This is helping kids really hone in on the meat of the question. How do I answer this in 140 characters? The students will also have a poll that they can answer and discuss, and then they'll also have a number crunch. Every blast has a number crunch along with it. So in your mind, what do you think 60 means? Let's see here. Number of items on the empathy quotient test, a questionnaire used to assess and measure empathy levels in individuals. This will even take the kids out further to learn more about that. So let's go back. So everyone's going to start off with a blast. So let's go ahead and re return to the unit. So now we're going to move on to a first read. We're going to go ahead and use To Kill a Mockingbird. So To Kill a Mockingbird, first we're going to have a first read. You'll notice here, these are going to be all the common core that you are addressing. And of course, you'll have a lesson plan to go along with that. So you'll see all the skills. You'll see the time, the materials. And notice here, you'll have a core path and an in-depth path. So if you really get into Kill a Mockingbird, you'll be able to get farther into any materials. So let's go ahead and we're going to preview this. So within every story, you're going to start off with an intro. Now when students hear of a new movie, what's the first thing that they do, or what my two teenagers do, is they want to see the trailer. What is this about? So we have included trailer type um, media pieces to get the kids interested and excited. So let's go ahead and take a listen. Deep South during the Great Depression, six-year-old Scout, the daughter of defense attorney Atticus Finch, sees the world as both idyllically good and terrifyingly evil. Investigating the mystery of her re exclusive neighbor, Boo Radley, she struggles with her conflicting views of the world as her widowed father is burdened with defending a black man charged with raping a white woman. Read the quintessential American coming-of-age tale of racism, justice, and integrity in Harper Lee's To Kill a Mockingbird. So we have an introduction for the kids to read, making it more relevant for them, and then we'll go into our first read. So as we're in here, the students can always listen to it, but we have added another feature called Audio Text Highlight. So for your kiddos While that are struggling, they can listen and read at the same time. We're red -rimmed. Watery. There was no color in his face except at the tip of his nose, which was moistly pink. He fingered the straps of his overalls, nervously picking at the metal hooks. Jim. 
Now, if any of you have students that just need even a little bit more help with it, we could even turn down the audio by 30%, going just a little bit slower. His eyes, as blue as Bill Harris's, were red rimmed and watery. There was no. Now, you could always print. So, if you, all of your students maybe have a need to be able to mark up on paper, they can always print. Now, students in the student edition will actually be able to write directly into their screen. So, they'll be able to take notes, they'll be able to ask you questions right here. So, then we're going to move on to study sync. Now, before we do that, does anybody have any questions? And you're feel free to ask any questions. Jen, do you have any questions going there? I'll stop if uh, anyone does. We don't have any questions at this time, but we did have someone um, with an interesting comment that I thought everyone might want to hear. Uh, Great. Talking about how using short stories in nonfiction would be beneficial. Um, you know, shorter pieces to give students more practice. And I think that you'll see as Nancy goes through this, um, and she's talking about excerpts, that's definitely one of the things that we promote in StudySync. Looking at um, prime excerpts from a popular text you're probably already covering in the classroom, and um, being able to do some close reading and writing around that excerpt. And I wanted to point out that um, when she's showing you some of these previews in the videos, if you see any lag time, just know it's because of the webinar system. When you watch it, it's nice and clear. And um, a lot of teachers may have students do some of these activities individually on their own computers. However, most teachers are going to choose certain things to bring into the whole class. So a teacher might show the preview to the whole class and then have a discussion afterwards about predictions they have about the book, um, things that came up. All of that can be found in the lesson plan. So discussion prompts, ways in which you might use some of these features, you can also find those in the lesson plans as well. Um, someone asked how, how long the excerpts usually are. Um, it's going to be, uh, I can't remember the percentage of the text, um, but they're usually an excerpt from one chapter. So it's going to be something that can be managed by students in one class period. Okay, thanks, Jen. Anything else? Um, I don't think so. We have some other questions coming in. I'll answer these, or we'll um, save some of them for our next break, and we can address those um, to the group. Okay, great, great. Um, the next piece is called a Sync TV. And the, what Sync TV is are students modeling, um, talking about literature, talking in a higher level of thinking. Um, I know that you're all working with 6 through 12 kids and sometimes it's hard for them to get to the point where they really can have rich discussions. So we've added these um, the Sync TV so your kids can see modeling. And let's go ahead and we'll take a look at this. the figure of speech. Atticus says the scout. Remember, it's a sin to kill a mockingbird. Of course it is. They're pretty and they think. They're not that pretty. Here, I got it. They're pretty annoying, too. You would know. They're all over my hometown. I live there. Wait, have you ever killed one? What? Look at it. Look at it. Like, you know, no. Yeah. Let's look at the prompts. Uh, consider Atticus's advice to scout about trying to see things from another person's point of view. How might this apply to different characters in the excerpt? Write at least 200 words about what it means to try and walk around in the skin of another character. How might this apply to different characters? So maybe there are a couple of samples in here? Well, the first one has to be Walter Kennedy. I feel bad for that kid. Oh, not me. I don't like him. Why? I don't know. Huh. So as you see here, these are students. These are high school students um, modeling, talking about To Kill a Markingbird, and talking about the assignment that they have to go along with this. Now in the middle school program, with the more middle school books, those students are going to be uh, more of a middle school age. So this is a very relevant and um, very appropriate for those grades. So then we go on to think. These are the questions 
that they're watching of the modeling. So Walter speaks in a southern dialect that reveals not only where he grew up, but other things about his character. So the students have to go back and cite examples of dialect. So they can open up their text in, their new win in a new window if they'd like to, to find the answers to there. So I'll just, so you can see the next questions. And so they would go all the way through. So this is um, how one of the reads would go. So first of all, you would have an introduction. The students would read. Then they're going to follow some modeling and answer questions. So let's go back to our thematic unit again. So we're going to move down to the Kill a Mockingbird. And then we also have the skills. So if you remember in the very beginning when I was um, discussing this, 15 to 20 skills. So this one is talking about textual evidence. We know that is such a big piece. So this is what textual evidence is. And let's go ahead and preview to show you what this is going to look like. The first thing you're going to have is a definition of textual evidence. Textual evidence. So this is a big piece. That's because most texts require readers to interpret the text evidence uh, to understand the intent, meaning, or content. Every detail in the text can be a clue to the intent, meaning. So here they are. They're, they are defining what textual evidence is. Now, in the modeling, they're actually going to be talking about textual evidence in regards to Kill a Mockingbird. Text evidence? You have to read into the details to better understand the story. Harvard Lee's novel about so many things. I know, about childhood. So many times, students may be able to give you a definition of what textual evidence is or a definition of other skills that may have a hard time putting that together with the actual uh, text that they're reading. So that's what the modeling here is for. Justice and race, and well, well being Boo Radley. So where does the character Walter Cunningham fit into all this? That's a good question. Galkus is a pretty... And then we'll move over to your turn. Someone asked about assessment earlier. Oops, I'm so sorry. I lost, just real quick where I'm at, I apologize here. So here, this is what looks like a part question. You've got a two-part question. So your turn. You read, and then you answer the two-part question, part A and part B. So having this will help your students be more prepared for the Smarter Balance or Park-like tests. So does anyone have any questions about any of the skill base? Now, at any time, you can also search just by skill. So if you have students that uh, maybe in 6th and 7th grade somehow miss some of the skills that were important to them, you can always pull those skills up and assign those or work with your students in whole class instruction. Jen, did you have any comments or uh, questions at this point? Uh, we did have someone ask about um, the rigor that is involved. So if you want to talk about how um, you can use these to increase the rigor of the assignment. One of the things that I was thinking about is how because most of these assignments are going to be shorter excerpts, students aren't just doing a quick read and then an activity. They're really getting deeper into the assignment. Um, they're seeing some modeling, they're doing some discussion of their own, and they're doing some close reading and writing around a particular text, therefore increasing the rigor of the assignment itself. And to add to that for, with Jen is that the students will do quite a bit of peer review. Now, sometimes peer review just, you know, it can be very glossing because kids might have a best friend grading their materials. With StudySync, all of our peer review is anonymous. So students do not know who they're grading and they don't know who's grading them. Students also have to follow a rubric. So not only do they have to answer the question, they also have to grade another student's answers by following a rubric. So giving them that higher level of, of understanding of that question, so which really adds to the rigor. So not only are they answering a question, they're also having to grade it too. So we're going to move, unless you have another question or comment, Jen? 
Okay, we're, then we're going to move over to the, uh, the close read. And I'm going to go ahead and we'll just hit preview. So once again, you're going to have a, the other an intro. You're going to be having your reading, but here you're going to have a skills focus. So again, getting closer, getting more of an in-depth reading. You'll have your sync TV and then your writing assignments. Now, these are the writing assignments. As a teacher, you can edit this 100%. You can use our prompts or you can use your own prompts. This is where the students are going to do a peer review, really diving in. So here is the question in Chapter 15 of To Kill a Mockingbird, Lawyer Atticus Finch is a jailhouse uh, protecting his client, Tim Robinson. So here they have, how do the events that unfold in the scene relate to the theme of compassion developed in other sections of the excerpted novel? Cite textual evidence to support your in inferences and analysis. So once again, they're using the skills that they've already learned from prior and they're going to have to answer the question. They can always get back to the, t um, to the text if they need to. And then this grading rubric will always be available to them too. Now the grading rubric, you can use ours or you can also make your own. Completely up to you. So once the students do this, they write in here, and I hate to say blah blah, but for, for today, the students will go in here, and then once the student is finished, then they begin to answer and grade other students' responses. So they have to do their own before they get to do anyone else's responses. Any questions, sir? Okay. So as you see here, that I just used the killing to kill a mockingbird. There's your sink. So here you'll see, the, like in the jungle, for instance, you have your first read. Here are your different skills. And then you're also going to have blasts associated with the program again. So you don't have to keep looking for different blasts. So it really keeps the, a different kind of level of reading, learning, writing uh, within here. Now, at any point, you can edit this, or maybe you could make your own blast. Um, you, you can make your own blast if you want to, to bring in more information. So just to kind of show you here the different skills. And I do want to bring to the end, I, I, don't, I know scrolling sometimes can make your belly hurt, but I do want to show you at the end you're going to have a pulling it all together. So let me get here. Whoops, excuse me. I've got too much going on here. So you'll have skill, you'll have another blast that brings it together, and then you're going to have an extended writing project. So you can come here to see the extended writing project. You can do on an argumentative. It'll give the skill base that's needed throughout here. So let's go ahead and we're going to see the first read of argumentative writing going to talk about what the introduction is, the reasoning. I don't know why that keeps doing that and I apologize greatly for this. And then the students will have to do a little bit of reading to give them higher background. So when we tell students let's do some argumentative writing, you know, they may not understand this. So we really do give you the background knowledge for the kids and then, then we'll go into their questioning. Of course, then you'll have a research project at the end if you want to. So this is an extra piece that you can add to your thematic units. Here's the objective. These are all the skills you're going to be taking over the time, the materials. Now, knowing that this is not, because this is an extra piece, you don't have to add this in to make sure that all of those common core pieces are covered. This is just something extra that you can do. So I do want to go a little bit farther. Let's go in back into the instructional path. I do want to go through some of the lesson plans so you can see how in-depth that they are. So we'll go into, actually we'll go into the jungle this time. So you can see a lesson plan. So first of all, it's going to be talking about all of your materials, um, all the skills that are being covered. 
how long it is. And then I talked about this before, the core path and the in-depth path. So obviously the core path, this is going to be a little bit, you know, um, very, very robust, but it's going to take it down. But of course, if you want to spend a lot more time on this, or maybe you have an advanced class, um, your honors classes, this would be a great piece for that because it's going to have that higher level of understanding and it's going to be uh, quite a bit more rigor to go along with it. So they can go out, out with technology. So if you really want to be pushing that technology piece, that's going to be right here in your in-depth. Reading and annotating, just a little bit more. So if you want to follow this as your regular class, and this could be your lower level, you could do that too. So it just follows it quite a bit more. Does anyone have any questions about the lesson plans? Okay, so I do want to bring you back to the unit page just to kind of show you the other ones that we have for right now. Um, again, there's four. So in the eighth grade, we have what happens when life changes direction. So I'll just, or I'm sorry, that's sixth grade. I want to show you some of the readings that you'll have. Hatchet. Dragonflies, the father of Chinese aviation, really um, a very different kinds of reading, different kinds of genre, uh, really to allow the kids, whatever their interests are, to, to pick something for them. Seventh grade. The Barrio Boy. The Hobbit. Travels with Charlie. Ricky Ticky Tavi, Apollo 13, some really wonderful um, texts to read from. Eighth grade is Suspense, The Monkey's Paw, Telltale Heart, Lord of the Flies. We've done empathy here. Here is now if if that's your school district. You think that maybe one grade would be better for, maybe you do more American history in 10th grade. You can change these. This is nothing that's set in stone. That's why Study Sync is so wonderful. You can really pick and choose what you want to. We do give you thematic units so that you can follow so you make sure you have all of your Common Core covered. But if you want to pick and choose and maybe pull something out, that's fine. It's, it's completely up to you. So you've got Macbeth. The sports gene, and I'll take you over to the 12th grade. Here's our American history. So you really can be cross-curricular. The Crucible Scarlet Letter, Federal's Paper number 10. I'm sure every teacher loves that. And then the Epic Heroes. This is a fun one. Lots of good ones. More Lord of the Rings, Canterbury Tales, Grendel, Beowulf, so many exciting reads. Okay, uh, Jen, you want to come in with some questions and some comments? Sure. A um, couple comments that came up or questions that came up um, having to do with rubrics. Okay. Um, I do have a number of Common Core-like rubrics, so those are also going to be similar to the part testing. Um, that teachers can use with an assignment. So students would be using those rubrics when they do the anonymous peer review. Um, however, you can always add your own custom rubrics to your study sync account. Oops, excuse me. Yes, so um, I'll let you speak on that a little bit more. Okay, um, but yeah, so you can um, use the rubric that is attached to an assignment or you can change it to use one, um, a different one or one of your own that you have added. Um, we've also had another question having to do with blasts and why we have that limit of 140 characters. Um, that, oh, go ahead, Nancy. Oh, I was just going to go ahead. I knew you were going to say there. <laughs> um, that doesn't have anything necessarily to do with Common Core, um, but I think it is a great way for students to synthesize their thinking after they've read some background info, done some research links, had um, some great discussions in the classroom then they develop their own opinion in, in a small um, sentence. 
Um, so I think it's a, a great skill for students to acquire and practice. Um, another thing to note is blasts can be assigned as writing assignments. So if a teacher wants her students to write more than 140 characters, then she can assign that as a writing assignment and specify how many words or characters she wants her students to respond in. Yeah, so it's a very simple process to go from 140 characters to a more of a paragraph style. It's no uh, very easy because sometimes with, you know, if you want them to really de dig deep and turn this into more of a research project, that is no problem at all. You can always change it to a writing assignment. A lot of times teachers will consider assigning a blast just how it is first. So students will respond in 140 characters. Um, maybe this is to help them develop a thesis when they're working on an argumentative piece of writing. And then they'll assign it a second time as a writing assignment, asking them to now um, go further with their opinion and write um, you know, 300 words or whatever it may be on the topic with uh, supporting evidence to support their opinions. I know that's how some teachers use it in the classroom right now. Okay, any other questions? Um, yeah, I, I didn't know if you wanted to show. Um, we had a question about uh, the scope and sequence and how, you know, if you want to go to the, your home page and you can find the scope and sequence and the table of contents for those thematic units, um, just point out where those can be found for teachers right there in the um, groundbreaking, groundbreaking digital curriculum section right there. You can see the table of contents and the scope and sequence for these units. Um, Nancy, go back to your home page for a second. Okay. And within that paragraph there, you can just there we go, uh, the link to it. So what I'm pulling up here, this is the scope and sequence of the, all four of the thematic units per year. So let me go through here if you want to see them. I know they're very small. Um, let me make this a little bit bigger for you. There we go. So this will be the sixth grade. Now once again, you get four, uh, four units per year. And again, you can make all the changes you want to them. Now if it's highlighted, that means that we have a literary unit that goes along with it. So facing challenges, heroes, sorry about the scrolling, oh this is very long. So what you can do at the end, you're actually going to be having um, a little tiny survey. Um, we've asked you to answer a couple questions, and your sales rep can give you these, this unit, uh, to show you what these all are, and then also codes. So in pursuit, what drives to us to undertake a mission, the powers that be. So you'll see here, they're uh, really great things for teenagers, things that, to think about. What are the challenges of humor interactions? I really, do, I just think it's a great way um, to really think about, you know, lit, uh, literature instead of just the book itself. So we, you can uh, get a hold of your rep, and then you can be able to see all these. Any other questions on that? Uh, you might check out the table of contents quickly too. Just point out where those are. Okay. Also on the home page in that same section. Yeah. So we're going to do table of contents. Make it a little bit bigger for you. Yeah, so you can get, you know, see all the Common Core skills that are going to be covered. And then you can see all of the um, stories that you're going to be covering. So as you'll see on the right, there's so many different genres, informational, biographical, short stories, really a, a plethora of different kinds of readings. And so once again, how do you get that once you um, get the codes? Whoops, excuse me. In your home page. You can go to table of contents or scope and sequence to get to the units themselves. 
you'll go to the library. This is where you can search by titles. But then to get to the units themselves, here will be the first will be the thematic units. And then you'll have the literature based. So oh, I, I want to ask a question here. Um, you know, with the thematic units, we really make it our goal here to to allow you to still have time at the end of the year to teach what you want, but then again, having all of the Common Core laid out. Um, does this kind of something like this kind of ease your mind when it comes to teaching the Common Core that you have something laid out for you? Or I'd like to hear some of your thoughts on this. And then see, one of the things that uh, came up has to do with uh, differentiating your instruction. Uh -huh. So um, the lesson plans have a lot of ideas for how you can do that with um, meeting the needs of your students, whether that's um, providing challenges or um, modifications, ELL students, struggling readers. However, when you're assigning this, assigning anything in StudySync to your students, you can actually um, modify the assignment based on their needs. So you could send the same that you could send the same assignment to different groups of students and change the assignment based on what their particular needs are. And it's really easy to make an assignment. So you can make as many classes as you want. So if you have, let's say, 120 kids all day long, you can pull all of your ELL students throughout the whole entire day and put them into one class or all of your students that are reading below grade level. So then when you are going through here, and let's say you want them to do the read, or you want them to do the think questions when you assign it, you can go through here. I'm going to make it uh, an assignment so you can see. So here's all my different classes. So my hour two. Um, let's say there's a lot of kids that are at approaching grade level. So I can put in different assignments, um, notes to them. Or, you know, I want the prompts, maybe not so in depth. I make a prompt that has more objective questions or building questions for the students. If you've got students that are of a higher level, you can make sure that there's no audio for those students. So you really can change your um, change the approach to reading. So I saw a question there about To Kill a Mockingbird. So you want the students to read To Kill a Mockingbird. Of course, they can listen, and then they, they have that text highlight that can go down to 30% slower. But the questions that you ask can be um, a little bit more geared for those students. Now, there is quite a bit of peer review in there. So you can also change the peer review questioning and the peer review answering. So if you assign this to students that are at that below grade level, only students that are below grade level will also be reviewing this. So you're not, you really are going to be able to really tailor this for those students. And if that doesn't make sense, I can try to um, uh, go through that a different way. But it really does allow you as a teacher to have so much differentiated instruction but not have to um, be quiet for a certain group. You can, you can put all those kids in one class and then really work with those students. Now the blasts um, are also going to start being leveled. Uh, we're going to have all three different Lexiles out with every new blast that we do. So again, you can have the same type of blast, but then have it on a lower reading level. I see a bunch of questions starting to come up. Jenny, Nancy, I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to reiterate um, something you said earlier. All of our excerpts are printable, so if your students can't access the computer, um, or maybe you're wanting to do some more whole class activity instruction, or small group or partner work, you can always print um, an excerpt, whether it's from the library or from one of the units. Um, and we've also had several questions about. Um, the fact that these are mostly excerpts instead of uh -huh. full texts. And I just wanted to point out in the library, um, one of the search filters on the left um, shows that you can actually search by the full texts that are available. I believe we have 91 right now. Um, these are going to be texts that are in the public domain. 
So they're written before 1930. Um, whenever students or you assign those to students, they can actually download a PDF of the entire text or they can open an EPUB version. Um, however, we have picked some of the more popular text and just pulled a prime excerpt so that your students can do some really close reading and writing and have some good discussions around that to increase the rigor of it, uh, of the activities that they're doing in the classroom. Um, also, sometimes an excerpt is all you're going to want to bring in to support your students. Um, if you're covering a, a To Kill a Mockingbird in class, you may want to bring in an excerpt from a, a nonfiction piece to help support students' understanding of that time period and um, to help support their understanding of the novel itself. And for you that are so, uh, what a literary unit is, just in case uh, some of you haven't had a chance to play with this yet, this is assuming, like a Great Gatsby, a lot of people read The Great Gatsby. So what this is, is you're already teaching this novel. You already have the books in your class, or you listen, or, or however that you do it. But what we do with this is we also give you an instructional path. Every single one of these chapters that you read, will have another text, to, informational text, or different kinds of readings to go along with it. So this one is View from the Western Front. You could either assign this text, something along, but this is what I think is fantastic, is a compare and contrast. So here's the question. After reading uh, Curtin's letter, find one more primary source document from World War I. How do the themes in uh, Curtin's letter and your second source contrast? So really, gives you a lot more information, a lot more material to teach, let's say, The Great Gatsby, and we're giving you all the extra materials that you need. So you don't have to sit there and go find all of those. And so how you find those are the literary units, and those are on the same page as the thematic units. So the, the difference between the two is the literary units are novels you're already reading, and we give you more materials to teach that. The thematic units are the ones with four that you can cover all the common core. Um, Artia, let's see. I'm just kind of reading some of these questions. Um, Jen, you want to read that last one? Let's see, from Jack. Oh, you can set up classes. So someone had written, um, our district has adopted a strong RTI pedagogy. Can you re reiterate this program address to this? So first of all, um, Jack, let's go back to the home screen here. Or just, excuse me, to the library. So you've got kiddos that are struggling. You can search by Lexile. You can search by Common Core grade level. Or, you know, let's say you have some kiddos that are on the fourth and fifth grade reading level in ninth grade. I can go through here and search just on that fourth and fifth grade. Look how rich this is. I mean, Alice in Wonderland, Aesop's Fable, Across Five Aprils, really wonderful pieces of literature on that fourth and fifth grade reading level. So you, as a, a school district that really works on that RTI, or leveled reading, this is a great way for you to be able to sign this. So you just assign it to your kiddos um, that need this, and it's it'll just show up on their, on their home screen. So it's an excellent way to... Um, do RTI or any kind of remediation. Okay, um, Jessica, is study a completely online program and can it be assessed using a Chrome browser? All of our students have Chromebooks. This works phenomenal on Chromebooks, iPads, any kind of Droid, your cell phone. This is, um, there is no flash with this, so it works wonderful with everything. And you have to remember, everything can be printed. So if you do need to print something out, it's, it's no problem at all. Um, good. Wonderful. Um, let's see. Any other questions? Jen, do you want to add anything else? Um, I think you've done an awesome job. The only thing that I would um, maybe reiterate that you've mentioned is the fact that everything can be customized in StudySync, so as you're sending out an assignment, you can make changes to that to meet the needs of your students. You can also just use the StudySync platform if you want, so if you wanted to send a uh, just a basic writing prompt to students so that they can practice the, the peer review uh, feature, 
if you want, or it's just maybe an assignment that comes directly to you if no peer review is um, allowed for that, then you know you can use StudySync as the platform for that. Um, you can create your own blasts, like Nancy mentioned, and all kinds of things. So th there are there is everything that she's gone through, but there's also a, so much more. So um, that's why it would be great if you could get in and dive in and look around and um, figure out how you might use some of these resources in your classroom. And I see a lot of questions come up. How do I access? Can we get the codes? I want to talk to my rep. Um, there is that small survey, and one of the questions will be um, about getting in contact with your rep. We will be giving all the, your information if you want it to be given out to your rep so they can get you the codes. They can come talk to you about pricing, how to get a pilot or purchase or things like that. So uh, the cost for a student subscription, um, I it's um, I think it's 17 a year, but we do can do bundles. So you can do seven, eight years at a time. Um, and remember, when you're purchasing this, you are not purchasing just one grade level. You get everything. And how that is so wonderful is that if you purchase this in sixth grade, let me go up here so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, the students, all of their assignments will stay with them. All of their writing will stay with them in a binder throughout their whole study sync experience. So you as a teacher in ninth grade could go look back at what they wrote in sixth grade to see how well they've progressed or or maybe there is there, there's a stint somewhere and they're like wow what you know maybe in seventh grade they start falling off and they can really see what happened so this that's the beauty you could really follow along a student could do a blast at the beginning of the year and do the same blast at the end of the year and see how their opinions change see how their writing changes so it's it's a wonderful way to look at that whole picture for a student so yeah, we can make sure that your um, your reps get a hold of you and give you codes so you can start playing around with this and um, you can see the all the wonderful things. Um, and then actually when you're on the home page, when you get into this, there's oh excuse me, there's wonderful how-to videos come down here of how to use this. So um, you'll be able to see quite a bit about that. We just have a couple more minutes. Uh, we're happy to answer any questions. I see one just came up. You guys have been great with the questions. You have a rep. Um, Tony, um, everybody has everybody has a rep. You'll just, um, it kind of depends on where you are. Um, they'll find you. So you'll have either an inside rep, an outside rep. We got you all covered. Even if you live in the islands, we even have you covered. So a survey will follow. Yes, Mary, a survey will follow. A short survey. I think it's like 10 questions. Nancy can, well, will teachers have access or attendees have access to the recording as well? Yes, yes. We're recording this right now, and then um, I, I'm not sure where it's going to, but I think that we'll send you a follow-up email to tell you if you want to um, share this with anyone else. And then we do have some other webinars too. So um, we have all of your emails, so we probably can send that out to everyone. Uh, Nicole, let's see, is there an email or anything showing that we participated? Yeah, you can just uh, give them that webinar email. And um, that sh hopefully if that should be enough. But if not, um, I think that I think that should work. Well, I am so glad you guys joined us today, and um, you've had some great questions. Uh, we hope that you start playing around. There's um, so much. This is such an exciting program, and I just we briefly touched on the thematic units today, and so much more that you can do with this program. So um, if you have any other questions, let your rep know, and maybe we'll run into you in the future at a presentation or a training or something along that line. So we'll stay on for just a few more minutes um, and see if anyone has any last minute questions. And Jen, do you have anything else to say? Uh, no, just uh, thank you for attending today, and um, you know, keep in mind as you're looking at StudySync and what it has to offer. You know, we have everything there to support you. 
but you can also make it your own. So it can be something that you use um, with the whole classroom, with individual students. It can be done in a variety of uh, technical settings. So if your students are one-to-one -one, or if you don't have very much access to technology, um, you can still access StudySync and use the resources. Oh, will there be social studies resources someday soon? Actually, we have a ton of social studies resources. Uh, but once again, when you're in the library, you will go down to the left side and you can go under social studies. There's 138 uh, texts. And then you just hit search. And there they are. We actually have done a training for, for teachers for, that are science and um, history teachers, how to bring more cross-curricular. So you'll have all this here. And this doesn't include the blasts. So there's so many social studies uh, with the blasts, too. So very heavy on all science, STEM, social studies, really making this cross-curricular. Oh, good. Glad to see that, Mary. Uh, yeah, I definitely work with your McGraw-Hill rep. Uh, they'll be happy to help you out with whatever you need, and um, you know they can they can make a lot of goodness happy for you. Well, thank you, everyone. And like I said, we'll stay on for a couple more minutes if you have questions. But if not, the webinar is over, and uh, we'll get out the uh, training or we'll get the the recording out to you. So if you want to share it with anyone, you sure can. <laughs>